Playing some soulful kazoo, you know how I do. Some soulful kazoo. Soulful kazoo, yeah. I, I can't play the sax or the trumpet or the harmonica, so I had to make do with the kazoo. I didn't even know you could play a kazoo. Anyone can play a kazoo. It's just point and shoot. Uh, fair enough. <sighs> <laughs> well, I think it's time to blow this scene. Get everybody and their stuff together. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Let's jam. You know, I think we—I don't think we could have planned that intro better than uh, if we tried. Nope. See, improv all the way, man. If you trust in the power of a kazoo. Anything is possible. I figured if I brought my kazoo, nothing could go wrong. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, man. This look, is... I did doodles. <laughs> you did doodles? Oh, my God. Yes, look. See, there is a... Let's see if people can guess what we're talking about based on what my doodles are. Um, if if my the intro hasn't done it already. Yeah. I drew a picture of a very dirty, much-abused, half-smoked cigarette. Um, a bonsai tree. And a cup of noodles, and it's still warm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're talking about the Netflix Cowboy Bebop series that came out in 2021. This is going to be rough. It's going to be a ride. I don't even actually know what, because like my, my expectations were both met and not met at all. And I am both pleased and... And um, not pleased about that. Indeed. Well, before we get into that, um, welcome guys. Welcome back to the General Geekery Podcast. This is the podcast, of course, where we geek out about all that we love to geek out about with no remorse. No regrets. And with all of the enthusiasm in the world. Indeed. As always, we are your lovely, lovely hosts for this podcast. I am your resident coffee ninja by day, actor, gamer, and streamer by night, Donald Kaczynski. And as always, the wonderful lady to my left, she is our dice slinger extraordinaire, artiste magnificent, and our resident video game inept. And soulful kazooist. And soulful kazooist. <laughs> she, is the, she is the one and only Hannah Kubiak. Hello. And like Hannah said, today we are talking about the 2021 live action remake, redo, or whatever you want to call it. Of the classic anime series, Cowboy Bebop. Mm. Now, if you guys want to hear our thoughts about the original series of Cowboy Bebop, um, check out our episode from Anime April 2021 all about it. It was my hundredth time watching it. It was Hannah's first time watching through it. So, uh... I, a, I became an instant fanatic. Yeah, long story short, um... I was reminded why the original series was one of the greatest animated series of all time, and Hannah understood for the first time why this series was so good. Mm hmm So, definitely go check that out. Now... I'm kind of scared. Yeah. <laughs> so, before we get into um, the show itself, um, I actually took some notes. This you time. took notes? I actually took notes you this took week. You took notes. I had a lot to talk about because there was a lot. Yeah. I'm hoping I have a couple of thoughts and um, I have a couple of thoughts and then I'm hoping that I can just sort of play off of whatever it is that you say because I'm sure that you've noticed things that I just didn't. Well, that's why there's two of us. But before mm -hmm. we get into uh, the full on uh, show itself, um, I want to talk about a little bit about the development of this series because mm -hmm. this series has been, before it released in 2021 it, it's still 2021 when we're recording this this is just mm -hmm. going to be the first episode of 2022 but regardless this series has been in development by this studio since 2017 holy shnikey yeah it's been in development for a long time i mean early drafts and early announcements mm -hmm. for this series had keanu reeves as spike spiegel 
Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that reaction, though. I do not understand one bit. Uh, John Wick, probably. More than likely. Oh, okay. But, um... Eventually in 2019, um, the cast list um, uh, was eventually announced. At least our three main leads of uh, Spike, Jet, and uh, Faye Valentine. Portrayed by John Cho, Mustafa Shakir, and Daniela Pineda, respectively. Those of you that uh, don't know either of them. Uh, John Cho, form formerly of uh, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle fame. No stranger to sci-fi. I mean, he was the rebooted version of uh, Hikaru Sulu for the reboot of uh, Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, he's got a pedigree behind him. Mm hmm And uh, Mustafa Shakir, um, as I remember, um, no stranger to Netflix series as well. He was in, um, uh, he was in the Marvel series Luke Cage. <gasps> oh. So, I remember seeing him. Okay. Daniela Pineda? No idea who I, she was. She looks really familiar, but I think she just reminds me of somebody. Honestly, I'm not a lot of Netflix Does actors. Does she remind you of somebody? Um, the cosmonaut. Oh, god damn it! Gosh, man, do, do she not remind you of the cosmonaut? Okay, anyway. Seriously, what, <laughs> ser seriously, who the hell is the cosmonaut? I don't know. Welcome to the bebop. <laughs> Welcome to the bebop. All right. So, the series had been in development hell for quite some time. Um, during 2020, um, it was set to be released. Unfortunately, production had to be halted when John Cho um, suffered an injury on set. Yep. So they kind of had to postpone it. That, along with the pandemic, kind of mm -hmm. postponed stuff. Um, but eventually, this past fall slash winter, Netflix released Cowboy Bebop 2021 live action. Mm -hmm. One season of 10 episodes based on the original series as well as the original movie um, for Cowboy Bebop. I haven't and seen that, actually. We haven't talked about I that. I want to see that just to see it. I'll, th I'll find out where we can get, get it. Awesome. But um, to say that reviews were mixed is putting it lightly. But you guys know us. Um, we do not usually look towards um critical reviews of critics or other people we like to watch the product and assess for ourselves yep. both of us um in the days leading up to this recording just finished the live action series i watched it in one day it took me it took me it took me <laughs> two i am a I'm, i am a champion binger though i mean i i mean yeah Maybe we should maybe we should switch a uh, dice slinger extraordinaire with uh, ch the champion binger. Champion binger, oh, gonna... that could be that could be misconstrued in so many ways. But okay, you know, such a fanatical binger am I that I watched the live action um, remake, and then over the next two days I watched the entire anime again. You rewatched it? Yes. And then yesterday and the day before that, I skimmed the remake again. <laughs> okay, so you have two go-throughs. Yes, mostly. I mean, I just there were there were some things where I was like, oh, I remember this. This was this was boring. Like, it's just, 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 just. Well, all right, so well, maybe not boring, but just kind of like, eh. So, unlike uh, unlike the normal um uh, an the original anime series where it was around twenty five to thirty minutes per episode, this mm -hmm. uh, series takes more of the forty five minutes an hour long approach. Mm hmm. Um. And uh, in much of the remake style, um, a lot of the stories that were taken, uh, that were in this series, were adapted from different episodes of the original anime. Yep. We can kind of go through that, that if we want, what the episodes are about, what they focused on, if you want to. Yeah, do we want to focus sure, on that at the yeah, before we yeah. get into the characters? Yeah. So, episode one was an adaptation of the original session one of... Uh, yeah, the Red yeah. Eye episode. Yeah, of, yeah. The, of the Red Eye episode. Yeah. Um, um, what was that one called? I will get the full uh, episode list cool. right now. Wait, which episode list are you getting? New one or old one? Old one. Okay, I have the I have the the new one because it helped me remember. I basically have it written down Friends style, where it's like, 
Name of episode. The one where they chase the red eye guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the first episode of uh, the remake is basically a remake of the very first session of the original Cowboy Bebop, Asteroid Blues. Yep. Session two is more loosely based off of Session 22, Cowboy Funk. Yep, which only, is about the teddy bomber. Only there's no Cowboy Andy. Yep, that's true. I was expecting him to show up. I, I was a little... When sp- the assassin strolled into the bathroom, I thought it was Cowboy Andy. I really wanted Cowboy Andy to show up. I'm not going to lie. Maybe he will. I mean, he was on the um, he was on the board in um, Big Shot. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Which I gotta say, oh my god, I can't believe they did Big Shot. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> Indeed. Oh man. Shucks howdy. <laughs> Shucks howdy, amigos. Episode uh, three was an adaptation of the original Session 2, Stray Dog Strut. Mm-hmm. And similarly, episode four was uh, somewhat of an adaptation of the third session where we originally met Faye Valentine mm-hmm. in the original Honky Tonk Woman. Yep. No, wait. Well, partially Honky Talk Woman and also original Session 4, Gateway Shuffle. Mm-hmm. Because uh, the, bio, the bioterrorist thing. What about the, uh, the Ganymede Sea Rat fanatics? They made a mention of that, but the Ganymede Sea Rat was um, uh, d- um, extinct by the time of Peripheral. this one. Peripheral, like, yeah. <laughs> hmm. E- episode 5. Um, Dark Side Tango. Which is an adaptation of uh, Jet Story Session 16, uh, Black Dog Serenade. Mm -hmm. Black Dog Serenade remains one of my favorite episodes of the original Bebop. So Mm -hmm. I have some strong opinions about this episode, but we'll get into that later. I have strong opinions about stuff based on my favorite stuff, too. So So we shall see in time. Episode 6 was an adaptation of Brain Scratch, which was the um, uh, cult-like Dr. Londis episode. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which in the original anime was also the um, uh, ep- episode that was the f- featured the final program of uh, Big Shot before it was canceled. That's right, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. God bless continuity. Yep. God bless continuity. And then episode seven was an adaptation of uh, My Funny Valentine. Mm-hmm. Which, okay. is, um, uh, which is where we uh, meet um, an important figure from Phase pa- Past, which, again, mm-hmm. they alter for this one. Yep. Episode 8 was um, a adaptation of Session 20, uh, Pierrot Le Fou, mm-hmm. which is, oof, I love that episode. Me too. I love that original episode so much. It's probably, it's probably one of my, one of my, one of my favorite episodes of the, uh, the original. Mm, it's so good. I love it. It's so cathartic. <laughs> and then episode 9 and 10 is a little strange. Yeah. Episode yeah. episode nine exists as its own separate amalgamation, but sort of focuses itself as a flashback of one of our major characters. Mm-hmm. And then episode yes. ten. Yeah. And then episode ten, the finale of the season mm-hmm. is adapted from arguably the most pot, the most well known episode of Cowboy Bebop, Ballad of Fallen, Fallen Angels. Angels. Walk in the rain. In the rain. Walk in the rain. In the rain. I feel like we did this not too long ago. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we did. Yeah. So, let's dive on um, in. Okay. Let's dive right on in. So, starting in episode one, um, we get introduced mainly to Jet mm-hmm. and Spike. Yep. I yep. enjoyed their banter. A lot. I will say those like two, those they, those two are like the best chemistry mm-hmm. of this remake. Yep, they they had really good banter. Um, <laughs> I okay, I, I I knew that I knew we were we were in for some good verbal shenanigans. Um, at that part when um, Jet says they have a job um, on um, on Tijuana, and Spike is like, you know what I got last time I was in TJ, herpes <laughs> stabbed. Know what I was doing? Buying a churro. <laughs> like, Bro. I was like, oh my gosh. Love it. Overall, over I enjoyed uh, John Cho's performance overall. I mean, it's very different from how we saw Spike in the original. He there's still a he still carries an essence of like the original Spike, mm-hmm. but Well no, yeah, like the very first shot we see him in when he walked out of the elevator and they're like, hey you with the headphones, he takes them off, he's like 
what? You know, like, yep. like basically he's got that sort of dazed, oblivious, I just wandered in here and don't know what's going on kind of that spike, vibe going. That, that Spike was often wont to do. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, yeah, sort of oblivious puppy one, one minute and uh, ass, it, ass kicker the next. Indeed. Hmm. So they go after the same um, uh, hitman, the same dealer that they went after in the first episode, um, mm -hmm. Asimov. Mm -hmm. Only, in this one, this is a little bit different. In the original, Asimov was um, just a guy that went out on his own. But in mm -hmm. this version, he's tied to the Red Dragon crime syndicate that Spike mm -hmm. was a part of. Yeah, so kind of the um, inciting incident of this whole series is is um some is is someone from the syndicate vicious finding out that spike is still alive and then that leads to like everything else that goes on it's kind of like um well as, as he said in the episode like it's time to wake up you know yeah. like he's been traveling the galaxy or whatnot you know uh on the lamb keeping uh keeping his head down mm -hmm. and now that's basically over but he's going to keep pretending it's not, because that's what people do. <laughs> You've been watching Sherlock again, haven't you? That's what people do! Oh, hey, everybody. It occurred to me just as I said that. I didn't, do it on, <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. I love it. Yeah, but... Yeah. Um. I... So I actually... I didn't mind that they made a tie-in to the Syndicate right away. Because it kind of, what you want to do in a, in a movie or a book or a show is show your character in their normal life. So, mm -hmm. You know, tracking down a, tracking down a bounty, um, in the, the one in the casino. Tracking down a, a bounty, it goes kind of belly up. They get less money for it than they were expecting because of all of the damages and things that they caused and everything like that. And that's pretty that's pretty typical. That's typical life for um, the crew of the Bebop. And then this episode with the red eye, the syndicate gets is is involved in it. And uh, Spike tries to walk away. He's like he's like you know when it comes to the syndicate we walk away right. He's like yep. yeah we usually we do but we really need a lot of money. And he's like ah no uh, we don't want to do that no. Yep. But they get involved anyway. Someone recognizes him. Someone tells Vicious. Vicious, uh... He said fearless. What? What? Why? Why Why did you do that tagline, first of all? Why, why, why would you name him fearless? It could have just been like Spike, like before. It could have, yeah. I, I don't understand the meaning behind, behind why they decided to give Spike a title. <laughs> it, that was my phone. To me, that just made it feel, he, it made him feel, like, less unique. More of, like, a, it's like a stereotype kind of, like, tagline mm -hmm. that you would give someone. Yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why they did that. But, uh, um. Explain to us, writers. <laughs> explain to us. Yeah. Um, then, um, episode two, um, we get a little bit more yeah. insight into, like, the inner workings of, like, uh. This was one of my favorite episodes in the remake, actually. The Teddy Bomber one? Yeah. Okay, I'm... I, I I just thought it was amusing. <laughs> it 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 was like one of the episodes that did have like that bebop charm and mm -hmm. everything. So I can see why. Mm -hmm. Like everything going on with uh, Jet and Spike as they try to figure out the Teddy Bomber um, yeah. situation. I I enjoyed the guy wearing a bomb and the bear head, and they couldn't understand what he was saying. <sighs> Just sort of like this whole, like, it could have been a really dramatic situation, but it just became ridiculous because you couldn't understand what the man was saying. Yep. <laughs> I, I, when, like, I can't just, understand what you're saying with I the I mean, they basically, on, no. basically ignored him in the original because of, mm -hmm. um... Uh, <laughs> that's right! Yeah, because, because of Andy, yeah. Because Andy and Spike were going at no, each other, and then, the, like, he's like, I don't appreciate being ignored! Yep, that's actually, that's... That's one of my that's one of my favorite in the anime as well is the bomber one. It's just so silly how like they don't even get the bounty. They're just fighting each other, like clambering up the destroyed uh, skyscraper like monkeys, with, having with, this with, with the most over the top um uh, Western music <laughs> yeah, imaginable. Bless you, Yoko Kano. I love oh, man. you. It was ridiculous. 
It's just like, yeah, with the, with the like tumbleweeds and stuff. <laughs> oh man. So that one was, uh, that one was interesting and you get a little bit of, um, like S Spike gets a chance to tell Jet the truth about what's going on, about whether, about him being like part of the syndicate and it coming back to haunt him now, but he doesn't. He keeps it to himself. He doesn't. That's true. Yeah. So that's one of the things that I found, like I was waiting for the payoff of that, you know, like just continuing to lie and lie and lie and hide all this stuff mm -hmm. away. I was like, this is going to get really bad and explode somehow. And like, if you just said something sooner, maybe things wouldn't have been so bad, but you know. I'll keep, I'll keep my opinions with that to myself until we reach sure. the end because sure. this all reaches it. Yeah. It's also during this episode that we get switched between like two different narratives here. Mm -hmm. We have the bounty of the episode that follows Jet and Spike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we have stuff going on with the syndicate with Vicious and Julia, mm -hmm. who is his wife in this version. Mm -hmm. Not sure how I feel about that. Well, I do know. I, I didn't like oh, it. Oh, I... I, <laughs> I didn't like it. Okay, can we... Can, can, can we um, I'll, I'll save the stuff with the characters for the end, because... Yes, we'll save the characters. We're going to save the characters for the end. I got I got things to say. But, but, with the characters aside, can we agree that, like, almost every single ep episode... It felt like two different narratives, like, like two completely different genres of shows. Actually, yeah. There was the sort of, you know... Um, quirky um s grungy space freelancer cowboy arc where we're just kind of like very like, firefly -esque. yeah very firefly esque and then we had oh, gangst gangster it's, macbeth yeah it seemed like it was yeah it seemed like it was macbeth but with space like, yakuza it seemed, it seemed like it was trying to be the godfather or something i thought it was just trying to be macbeth mm. Because, but, um, because because of how um, Bishops was trying to take control of the syndicate. Like, oh yeah, with the, with all the, the murder coup. and stuff with the coup. Yeah, so that the coup, which was in the like second to last episode in the anime, takes up pretty much his entire uh, Vicious's entire arc throughout. Yeah. Um, and so like we we follow like Vicious like um trying to cover his tracks and trying to set up in order to gain control of the syndicate and mm -hmm. power. But it kind of slows the episodes to like a crawl, though. Mm -hmm. Yep. When I skimmed, I mean that I mostly skipped over syndicate stuff in my second viewing. I was kind of like... It's boring! It is. It was boring. I was kind of like, I don't... Well, it was mostly... Oh, okay. Well, it's mostly about characters. But then also just all this political intrigue and stuff. Like, I'm not very good with that stuff to begin with. Like, it, like, like power dynamics and like, like the hierarchy of things and plays for the throne and stuff. Yeah, I just don't it, really. In shows like Game of Thrones or stuff like that, where that's like a central concept of like the show itself, mm -hmm. it can work. But that's never been what Cowboy Bebop was about. No. Yeah. They, well. Like that's, yeah. that was window dressing. Yeah. I think they sort of, they took that very powerful moment from the anime of the coup happening where you think that he's going to get executed and it does not go that way at all. Um, and that was like a really, that was like a, a really impactful one scene in the anime, but in the live action, they just sort of diluted it into this kind of long, crawl. Yeah, this long crawl. Crawl full of like people talking about people talking about power and how are we going to take power and yep. stuff. So, yeah. I, I I agree with you. Put bluntly, it was boring. And, uh, and, and then we just cut back to the Bebop crew, just being the Bebop crew only mm -hmm. in more confined settings. Mm -hmm. Episode three, we move on to the episode, to the story where we're introduced to Ayn. Mm -hmm. I love you, little Ayn. Mm -hmm. You, you can't be mad at the doggo. Good doggo. Good doggo. <laughs> Good job, Ayn. Good job. Mm -hmm. But uh, it plays out a lot differently than it did in the um, original yeah. anime. Because in the original anime, the reason why uh, the criminal Hakim 
abducted Ayn in the first place was because Ayn was a smart dog. Mm-hmm. Very smart doggo. I mean, he was able to use computer hacks and shit. Yeah. I mean, maybe... Well, he belonged to someone really rich in the sh- in the show. Yeah, in this one, he was basically just stealing rich people's dogs just yeah. to murder them all in order to tell them off. But he grew attached to the dogs, and I'm like... Yeah. The... Okay? Yeah, I mean, he was still a smart doggo. He, he is still a smart doggo. But, um, and yeah. Then... Maybe his owners just wanted a smart doggo. Fair, <laughs> fair enough. So it's not completely implausible and, that just stealing a rich person's dog uh, and, wouldn't get you a uh, a smart dog. True. <laughs> and and then uh, they and then Jet and Spike eventually take them take little I in order to be part of the Bebop crew. Mm-hmm. No, wait. It, 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 originally, he took I, Jet took I in order to give it to his new daughter as a birthday present, which I backfired. I mean... Why does Jet need a daughter? Why does he need a daughter? Maybe it's because, uh... I don't know. Maybe it's because old ex-cops are somehow not interesting enough to people. I'm not sure. But I... I... I, 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 I stuck with it. I was kind of like, I don't know about this, I, but... I, I, I stuck with it, too, mainly because, like, Jet was, like, the closest that they got to capturing the original. Mm-hmm. Like, Mustafa Shakir, like, mm-hmm. nailed it, most yeah. part, as Jet. Like, uh-huh. he even sounded like the original English voice actor, Bo Billingsley. He did, rather. Like, it was, like I had a pause room, and I'm like, what? Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, uh, whoa, Bo, is whoa. That you? Bo? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah. Voice so, yeah. acting gone? Legend? Yeah, so so yeah, he he did uh he did well as the sort of like the kind of the moral compass, quote unquote, the mom character on this in this crew, just constantly trying to keep everybody out of trouble or not. Which, which he kind of was as yeah. the, like the cats in the bebop, even mm-hmm. in the original. Yeah, I mean, he would lose his lose his. Uh... Well, sometimes, he, well, yeah, sometimes he would try to. He was like, "Well, you got yourself into this mess. Get yourself out of it." But then eventually, he's like, "Ah, oh, shit! I gotta go and help them." I guess. Yep. You know? Like. So. Um... So then, from there, we go to session four. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm basically just going to be skipping over all the syndicate stuff because it's all yep. the same yep. song and dance, like, at yep. that point. Until the un- We basically said everything that happens, so. Yeah, because it all comes to a point at the end and we'll, skip ahead, we'll, we'll, skip we'll get ahead. to Just skip fast forward. This one is the environmentalists. The one with the environmentalists where we meet Faye for the second time mm-hmm. who disappeared for two episodes. Yep. Why? I don't know, man. You introduce her in episode one I I'll just leave it to the side and wait till we talk about the characters mm. in the end. Um, so it's an adaptation of um, uh, the fourth original ep- um, story from the anime. Mm-hmm. But instead of um, uh, the monkey business virus turning them into monkeys, it turns it, t- it turns people into trees. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe that was a cheaper special effect. I yeah. I don't know. It seems like one of those. It seems like one of those changes that you kind of. When you think about it, you're kind of like, I mean, I'm not mad, but why change it? Yeah, like, it, like, turning them, like, into monkeys, like, it made sense with, like, how, like, evolution works. Oh, right, yeah, if you want to be symbolic about that, yeah. But at the same time, well, I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah, like a From regre- a science like a fiction, from a science a fiction void of view. Mm-hmm. But now we're turning them basically into woodland soylent green. Hmm. Uh, okay. Woodland soiling. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to put it. Yeah. So. So we get our first full like episode with Faye. Mm-hmm. And he eats cheesy toast with chopsticks. I thought that was interesting. Cheesy toast with chopsticks. I mean, it keeps you from getting your hands dirty, I guess. You don't eat cheesy bread with chopsticks. I wasn't mad. I just thought it was kind of weird. <laughs> I- I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> I'm agreeing with you. I'm like, I was like, no, actually, the first time I, w- I, w- I was like, I was like, why is she doing that? And I was like, oh, cheesy, you use cho- bre- cheesy bread is oily. 
And in this universe, I guess they don't have forks. You use chopsticks mainly for two main, th two main things alongside other stuff. Rice and sushi. Not necessarily in that order. And, and back alley earwax removal. Okay, that's probably number six on the list, but yep. still. But overall, like, the episode was fine. It was, it seemed more uneventful. This yeah, was, this was probably, did, like, the weakest episode. It did kind of drag from the, on the, the weakest on the Bebop arc, you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would agree with you on that, yeah. What follows that was one of my stronger episodes on the Bebop arc, which was episode five, which was the remake of Black Dog Serenade. Mm -hmm. It was, this was pretty good. I will say, um... Getting a lot of insight for this version of Jet, mm -hmm. I really love, like, for, I don't think I really talked about this in, in our original Anime April review of, like, Cowboy Bebop, but the Black Dog Serenade episode has become, like, one of my favorite stories in Bebop. Mm -hmm. Mainly because, as time has gone on, I have grown to love Jet as possibly one of my favorite characters of the show. Mm -hmm. Just, like, um, the way he carries himself, his backstory, basically, who he is, his morals, like, I'm the black dog. Once I bite, I don't let go. Not mm -hmm. until I've gotten gotten what I went after. It's... Yep. And then in this one, they basically uh, insinuated a very sexual reference to the black to the nickname black dog, and I'm like, oh my god, why? Please no, please no. <laughs> so this was probably like one of the more well done episodes, even though like the original one was more exciting because basically they were um, going after um, uh, us. A prison ship in space that um the pirate um that the prisoners basically overtook. Right, in this one they were just chasing the one guy who had gotten onto a who'd escaped onto a planet. Yeah, which I guess yep. yeah, one of the things that you like to do in a story to like ramp up the tension a little bit is to sort of narrow down people's options. Mm -hmm. So if you have a bunch of these prisoners and they're in a ship and they have to go, they have to try and find somewhere to land, but they're all criminals and all this stuff. They're, they're trapped, basically. There's not much they can do. Uh -huh. And then you throw a couple of cops in there with them, or ex-cops in there with him, and there's personal vendettas all over the place, and they're all in this, trapped in this little, little box together, and that just makes it a lot more tense than um, just searching for somebody yeah. through an entire city. Um, you know what I'm really disappointed about with this show that doesn't really relate to character? Uh, we never got Jet Ship. The Hammerhead? We never got the Hammerhead. Oh, no, we didn't, did we? That is the only ship of the Bebop that we did not get. He was they, always, yeah, he was always, he was they always gave him, piloting, they gave, the, piloting the, the Bebop. And we stuff. never got the Hammerhead. We got the Swordfish, and we eventually got the Red Tail. Mm -hmm. But we never got the Hammerhead. Yeah. And I'm saddened at this. Hmm. But... You know, easy come, easy go, as they say. Yep. So that, so that, so the narrative of that one was really good, but then again, I'm a little bit hung up on like my love for Black Dog Serenade, so I'm willing yeah. to forgive a lot of the stuff in it. Yeah. Except for one part, but we'll get to that when we get to the characters. Okay. We'll put a we'll put a pin in it. Pin, I'm gonna put a pin in that. I'm just gonna okay. take this balloon. I'm yeah. just gonna place it right on top of the microphone, yeah. which I will then grab later, because we're gonna get to that. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to take that pin, and I'm going to pop that balloon. Yeah. Okay, the next one was called Binary Two-Step, which is based on um, Brain, Scratch. Brain Scratch. The virtual reality, um, basically, you could just um, join join the uh, join the cult and renounce your body. Rele um, release yourself from worry. This, this episode in the anime, Brain Scratch... Kind of freaked me out, honestly. I don't know why. Like the yeah. first time I saw it, I was like, "Oh my gosh!" It like, is. It is the most existential. Um, it's so episode. existential, and I, yeah, I just was. I was just like, "Oh my gosh!" All this stuff about technology and stuff because it became even more. It's even more relevant now, and yeah. you know the um, the whole the way that they adapted it was also. Also pretty spooky, like just make, like um, Spike gets trapped in a loop where right. basically he has another chance to like uh, run off with Julia. 
and this is really the only episode like outside of like the first episode for the most part that mm-hmm. was mainly bebop focused yeah it, it was the only other episode that we never got like any real real like real life tiebacks like to the syndicate workings mm-hmm. if i'm not mistaken yeah so it was and, very interesting yeah and i um in this this episode particularly i um um there was some there was some really subtle like subtle moments in uh john cho's performance that i really appreciated like you know this this character is um just like sort of this like swaggering couldn't care less kind of uh you know cowboy yeah yeah but the moment he sees her he completely changes just like there's so much like just like sadness and tenderness there just like how spike in the original like spoke of julia mm-hmm. yeah especially during um uh oh god what was the two-part um was it jupiter jazz jupiter jazz yeah, yeah that was one, one of them yeah the one with um gren where oh, um uh, he find they they intercept like a message coming from someone by the name of julia oh yeah and he thinks that it's her and he runs off yep just complete completely uh just drops whatever he's doing yeah, yeah just to, just to run off and like it almost got him kicked off the bebop yep with um because jet was so mad at him yeah yeah and cause, then because of his basically his his secretive attitude and just going off and doing whatever the hell he pleases kind of thing right but yeah i i appreciated the character building in the virtual reality world, we got to see like another another facet of. You want to know a really so weird? I enjoyed that. You want to know a really weird freak out moment that happened? Yeah. Literally at the end of that um, episode, when um, uh, um, Spike said, "I could never forget you" or something like that. Literally, all the power in my building went off for like five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> oh my god! I was freaking out. I'm like, what the fuck? I can never forget you. I'm like, what? Like, what? <laughs> what? What? What shut, happened? Shut down. Imminent. Who dare? Who dare? <laughs> yeah, and who fired the who fired the railgun? Yeah, and just yeah. So that that whole thing about and also just the whole idea that having to you know like letting the past go is just something he cannot do. Like that that became really apparent in this episode just because of just how many times he went through the loop yeah even if even though it ended the same way and even though like the um the ai kind of changed the programs um so that uh julia said all of these horrible things and all this stuff like he just would not let it go yeah so that from there we get to from there we go to episode seven which is um uh faye um, basically meeting the important person from her past who she thought she loved, except for a man in, in this version, it was a woman pretending to be her mother. Yep. I don't know how we feel about that change. I mean, I think, I think it makes, I think, I think it made it a little bit more, it made it feel more personal. It might just be because in my mind, have uh, like having a family is more important than having like a lover, you know. And that's kind of the deeper sort of it's a deeper connection that you've had for longer kind of thing. And just like getting that back was because yeah, you know, you can find like like Faye could find a guy anywhere, but she only has one mother. So like, well. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't mad, you know. Well, I didn't really like the character of the mother that much. I, but... I, I can kind of understand that sentiment, but at the same time, we never really got any like previous indication or flashback material that really showed this. Oh yeah, that's true. Really? Yeah. Besides like... the phone call that she like in the, the the people into trees episode, right? We knew that she was around, but we'd never seen her. Yeah, like in the previous ep- like in the previous version, like in the original version. Mm-hmm. Like we got flashbacks which showed the um the um her Faye 
and the male version of this particular character, mm -hmm. like, being together, being with each other through all this, even though it ended up eventually being a con. Mm-hmm. I, it's just something, it's the same kind of um, thought process, that you mm -hmm. literally put your trust and faith into someone that you trust, especially as with someone with amnesia mm -hmm. like that, and then you the betrayal hurts that much more. Yeah, and then it's hard for her to trust again. Like, basically, she she doesn't she doesn't clue uh, Jet and Spike in on it, and right they're left it kind of in the in the dark as to the situation, what's going on. And Jet was kind of like, "Well, why didn't you tell us? We would have had your back." And she's like, "Yeah, I, I, I. like she it literally did not occur to her that they would have her back." Well, I, the reason why, like, it could have worked, but the reason why it did not work for me, I will go into when we talk about the characters <clears throat> themselves, because I'm going to blow Faye's character open like a firecracker. Okay. Feel free. From there, we go to the, um, uh, uh the Piero Le Fou episode. <laughs> that was creepy that was the cr most creepy ass thing oh my gosh for no reason oh my gosh like the only part about it that i don't like was the fact that vicious was the one that sent him after yeah Spike. and it wasn't just like this random encounter random encounter <laughs> I, I find the random encounter aspect much more terrifying in the original yeah, just like because you base he literally, he literally did nothing except he just happened to be there, and the guy just went bananas. It's like somebody, some people want to watch the world burn one way or another. The mm -hmm. joke, the Joker, mm -hmm. um, method. Yeah. So, I, I mean, still like, damn. Yeah. I I gave you props for tr for trying to create that madman to come to life. Like, yeah, that was pretty crazy. And you know what? So yeah, um, what is, oh, the, the, the episode in the anime is just called Pierre Le Fou, yeah? Pierre Le Fou. Pierre Le Fou. That is probably, yeah, that's what, that's one of my, if not the, my favorite episode from the anime. I don't, okay, you know, it's no matter, it's... no matter the context, I love watching theme parks burn. That's just... That's just part of who I am. If they ever demolish Six Flags, I'm gonna be there. <laughs> like, remind me never. Remind me never to take you to uh, Six Flags. Yep, I uh, don't like theme parks. I think they're 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 tacky and loud and uh, disgusting. I'm a thrill seeker, so I love roller coasters in mm -hmm. general. So yeah, <laughs> I won't force you to go on one if you don't want to, though. Yeah, so. I mean, I would go on a roller coaster. I just wouldn't. Want, I just wouldn't want to walk through the theme park to get there. Yeah, understandable. That's the thing. I don't want to be like, you know. Roller coaster. No. Don't, don't want to be solicited by clowns and people wearing Fair. wearing lion costumes and oh with, my. The, with the big hands and the, the big eyes. And then from there we get to episode <laughs> nine, which, oddly enough, a lot of people really found this one to be like the star episode. They thought they thought this one was one of the better ones yeah like the, like some of them really like the fact that they went into detail on like the history between like spike um yeah vicious and julia we can talk about the characters later in that but yeah that because this episode kind of ties into that mm -hmm. and why all that i enjoyed the cameo of uh john noble as yet another disdainful dad <laughs> that was great <laughs> Every fucking time. Every time. Thanks, John. John Noble. Noble. And then you, son, you're such a disappointment. <laughs> and then episode ten, we get to this version of Ballad of Fallen Angels. Yeah, called Supernova Symphony. Called Supernova Symphony. They do it all. Yeah. The church scene. Um, the window. The the, uh, the window scene. Like Ra a wild beast. They they do the song Rain when Spike um enters the church for the second time, oddly. Yep. Only this time they used the original Steve Conti version mm -hmm. instead of the one sung by um uh, oh, I forget I forget who the yeah it was you, my it was my something uh, yeah okay you know the funny thing about that is 
Um, so I'm more familiar with the Steve Conti version because um, I've listened to the soundtrack because sometimes you just want to drive along and listen yep. to something something that's popping. So um, Both versions are great. Yeah, yeah. And so I've heard the Steve Conti version a lot because that's the one that's on that album. So then when I when I watched the anime again, I had actually forgotten that there was a different there was that that the there was a different version of it and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I totally this whole time thought that the Steve Conti I kind of forgot that anime. too. It's like cuz like yeah, like the woman started singing and I was like, "Oh, it sounds it sounds it's got to go got a yeah. completely different tone." <laughs> and then of course you had the famous some um, uh through the through the glass oh, window fall scene with yep. uh, Greenbird in the background, which yep. didn't does not work in this version. Not really. Well, you know, I was because the context is so different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, well, well, the basically the moment they showed the church like, before anyone even went into it, I was like, hmm, he's going out that window in the end. I'm sure, <laughs> like, and, and, it's and, a fair and, assumption. And then the ending happens where. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it. So, everything plays out in the church scene, normally how it does in there. Like, the same dialogue, almost word for word. Mm -hmm. Which, it's... I'll put a pin in that. The What is it? He says, like, you, you, you should see what you look like, like a ravenous beast or something. Yeah, same runs for both of us. I bled out all that blood a long time ago. Then why, why are you still alive? <laughs> And then from there... We're such nerds. It, I mean... <laughs> I'm going to put a pin in that moment right there. I'm going to put it right up here on the microphone, and then we'll talk about it later. When and I, then uh, yep. in comes Julia, who during all this time was trying to... Under, ever since she found out that Spike was alive, was trying to undermine Vicious. Mm -hmm. And she demands answers from Spike, and she feels betrayed. And she's she shoots Spike and is basically the one that sends Spike through the window. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure... How I feel about that. I'll explain how I feel about it. Go ahead. Because we're almost because we're almost <laughs> done it with the episodes, and the and basically this this season ends mm -hmm. with Julia imprisoning Vicious and taking control of the syndicate. Yep. Jet leaves Spike um, uh, for putting his daughter in danger because Vicious was kidnapped her at the beginning of the final episode. Mm-hmm. Spike's wandering around now. Faye's trying to find answers of who she really mm -hmm. is. And in a weird cameo to end off the season, we finally get introduced to Ed. Like something right out of Dr. Seuss. I, you know, I, <laughs> I will say, I'll give credit to the actress for trying to imitate like how Edward was in animation, but mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of a character that you kind of have to reimagine kind of in re live action. It. Yeah. Like you can't... Ed's too enigmatically energized Ed of a character. doesn't have any bones half the time. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> She's an enigma wrapped in a mystery that could probably bend herself around in all sorts of ways where contortionists would be like, what? Uh -huh. Like, how would you get into the toaster? Edward has her secrets. <laughs> Edward has secrets. Edward knows. Um... And so that is the end of the season of Cowboy Bebop. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, that's probably going to be the end of the series because it recently came out at the time of recording that Netflix canceled Cowboy Bebop. Yep. Live action. Yep. So... How, how could you with such a rich product? Okay, we, we, were, we are about to blow this out of proportion. We need to talk about the characters. Okay, Doug, go ahead. Where would you like to start? I'll, okay. give, you for, I'll give you the first bullet in the chamber. Okay. I want to talk about Vicious. Okay. All right. The I could not take him seriously. The guy... Okay. Hold on. I was texting a friend, and it came across much better than what I would say now. Um, I could not... I could not take him seriously. Like... A few I just, moments later. Yeah, I found it his... His constant state of rage a lot less intimidating than sort of like the cold persona that he had in the in the anime. Like the thing that makes Vicious such a threat in the anime is uh, that he seems in control, cold and calculating. And in the live action, he was basically in a near constant, almost constipated state of rage. You know, like you know, you know this. It just bothered me. I I didn't really find. 
I didn't see him as a threat at all, really, because I was like, this, this, because he doesn't come up with the plan to take over the syndicate. Julia does. And he, like, I did, okay, you know how there are, there are some villains who you love to hate? Mm -hmm. I didn't even love to hate this, this, yeah. this character. Like, he just, I don't know. I don't know what the directors were telling that guy. They put too much of Vicious into the live action. Yeah, you know, Vicious the Vicious in the anime is pretty extra to begin with. <laughs> but the reason in the anime, the reason why he works so well is because the, the narrative involving Spike, Vicious, and Julia mm -hmm. does not over-arc the entire series. Mm -hmm. I've said it before previously, I think, when we were talking about Bebop. Bebop? carries itself as like an anthology of stories set in this universe mm -hmm. with like overarching subplots of like each of our main characters mm -hmm. jet dealing with like his his loneliness of his past Faye trying to figure out who she really is with everything coming back to haunt her and spike trying to run away from the um his past from the syndicate but at the same time try to find julia mm -hmm. yeah which Plays out totally different in both versions. Mm-hmm. Yep. But, yeah. I just, Vicious, I just couldn't get behind it. Like, what? every time he showed up, I was like, oh, man, this fucking guy with his face. Like, <laughs> like, less, like, there, there are some villains where less is more. And mm -hmm. Vicious is... Vicious is one of them. Vicious is one of them. Like, mm -hmm. you don't need to show him that much, but the moments where he does show up and mm -hmm. does shit... Yeah. Like, you know something's about to go off. Like yeah. you, Like you said, in the original, when it, he, it looked like he was about to be executed mm -hmm. and he broke out and took out the leaders of the Red Dragon. Mm hmm it, Yeah, that's... It, 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 it was a hell of a scene. Yep, that, that's classic. Classic vicious, yeah, like... And, of course, the dialogue between him and Spike when they first enter into the church. Like, the way they they talk to one another, still with familiarity, but there is an underlying bloodlust between this these mm -hmm. words. Yep. And, you know, yeah, the thing that they did with, with the syndicate backstory, kind of, and how, like, um, they were partners, and, like, Spike was the, like, level-headed one. I... In the anime, I feel like Spike was more of a hothead than Vicious was. But, well, like... Both had moments of it. Mm -hmm. But I think the main reason why it fails mm -hmm. is because in the live action, they show too much. Yep. The, like, it is a space western show, mm -hmm. but a lot of the storytelling elements of Cowboy Bebop, Bebop revolve around the rules and world building of noir yep where less where seeing tells a lot more than spoken dialogue right like we can build an entire tapestry of a character's history mm -hmm. through the slight flashbacks yeah, backs we get from spike's time in the syndicate in the anime mm -hmm. then we do it all with episode nine of the live action mm-hmm yep and I think that that's enough. Like, pe like, people say, they're like, oh my gosh, like, the backstory is so vague and we don't know exactly what's going on and stuff. I'm like, well, that's... Th that's, that's art! That's fine, you know? Like... That's how art works. You have to draw your own conclusions. Mm -hmm. There is a reason why, like, endings to anime such as Cowboy Bebop are mm -hmm. one of the most, like, talked about topics. Mm -hmm. Even the original director of the show... Still will not say whether Spike lived or died at the end. I think he died, but we can go into that another we, time. We did go into that another time. We, we, did, did, we did an entire extra episode on the Patreon for it. Oh, we did. That's right. Okay. I forgot about that. Okay. I'll probably really, I'll probably release it like for act for all you guys since it's been like a year since then. Yep. Yep. But oh, yeah. I'd forgotten about it. Yeah. But at the same time, like, oh my God. I'm like... Exposition Central, like, okay, first of all, can I talk about, like, the writing in the show? It was fu The writing in the show is fine. Mm -hmm. When it comes... Writing is fine. When it comes mainly to Spike and Jet. But you have to... But I mentioned Firefly earlier. The writing is very reminiscent of Joss Whedon writing. Hmm. It is very reminiscent to Joss Whedon writing, where 
the serious like moments are undertoned by like a smart little quip in order to mm-hmm. take away from like the seriousness and vagueness of a moment. That's never what Bebop had in its writing. Hmm. Like, sure, there would be like a snide little remark every now and again, but every but everybody still carried it with the same like seriousness and tone of the situation. Mm-hmm. Like the dialogue between Vicious and Spike again in the church. Mm-hmm. <coughs> They talk to each other, like, in terms of, like, playful words, but you can tell the seriousness in their voice and how they carry themselves. Mm -hmm. Which, I did not get that from the live-action version. Yeah, yeah, like the, the, um, yeah, the Syndicate backstory episode. I did not, I did not understand, like, even if, even if, like vicious saved spike's life and got him off the streets and stuff still i don't see how the two of those people those i don't see how the two of them could be friends really i mean i mean they i mean they bond over a conversation about whether one shaves their testicles or not by me (laughs) okay also what what the hell was with the writing in this one honestly (laughs) moments that i really had to stop uh, from some of like the like the choice dialogue in this was that one Jet's old associate, um, uh, talking about blackmail and and oh, like her that. saying that Jet was both black and male. I'm like, stop. stop. And then in the same episode, they were asking, um, uh, a dominatrix stripper about, uh, Hakeem, where she said, I'm late for my midnight bukkake. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> I had to stop. I was laughing so hard because I'm like, I, I, in, the, yeah. in the back of my mind, I was thinking to myself, this is like the fucking room. What is this? <laughs> like, who just says this shit? Oh my gosh. Who <laughs> just says this shit? I was ready to turn my hair out. I'm like, this is maddening. Oh my gosh. Oh. But as bad as Vicious is, and what a little bit of a betrayal of the character is, that doesn't compare to Julia. Mm-hmm. Oh my... Okay. You know how we said, like, less is more when it comes to it? Mm-hmm. When it comes to in real time screen time in the mm-hmm. anime, Julia only appears on screen in as part of the main story for two episodes. Mm-hmm. And it's the last two. Mm-hmm. Other than that, she appears mainly in flashbacks for both Vicious and Spike in Ballad of Fallen Angels and Jupiter Jazz. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, um, in the final um, uh, episode, the final two episodes, is when um, uh, everything comes full circle. Mm-hmm. And I... Yeah, and we, she's a. She's rather mysterious. She's a femme she? fatale. We mm-hmm. never, we're never in her mind. We mm-hmm. never understand like which way she's thinking. Mm-hmm. We know how Spike feels about the situation, mm-hmm. and we know a little bit about like how Vicious is affected by it. But at the same time, we don't know much about her. Mm-hmm. So when she's originally introduced in the finale. Mm-hmm. Of the original series, there's like a mystique around her. It's like a, mm-hmm. it's like an aura. It's like the top of Mount Everest. Like you've heard people talk about it, but mm-hmm. you've never seen it. Mm-hmm. And in that, and in those moments of like the final episode, like when she's holding her own with Spike mm-hmm. against the the syndicate assassins that are sent mm-hmm. after them, and you get a glimpse like, oh, okay, she's a capable fighter and everything like mm-hmm. that. And then when she dies in Spike's arms, it's. It's like, you don't know much about her from how she was for what little time we had with her, Mm -hmm. but you knew enough that this meant a lot. Mm -hmm. What was Julia in this? Kind of, kind of a, kind of a, a doe-eyed, um, um, (laughs) shut-in, kind of. Yeah, she, she didn't really have very much agency it seemed like until the very end when she's like takes oh over the entire God. city I'd, and I, I'd rather take Cersei from Game of Thrones than this <laughs> this is aggravating like Donald's getting mad oh I am Donald's I am getting mad we're, we're, we're doing the scary wor- Donald <laughs> we're doing the worst part of this right now just so I can just get this out of my system like oh my god like Literally, the kind of, like, my, the vibes that I was getting from Julia are the same kind of vi- um, vibes I got from the character Lori from the live-action um, uh, Walking Dead series. Mm. Like, very mani- very manipulative and just is all about me, 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 me. It's, like, it, mm. it's, it, it's a very 
oh my god, I don't even know what the term is for it because I'm just like seeing red right now. It's like, oh, I, I don't like it. I just don't like it. Like, you took this mysterious femme fatale character. Yeah. And, yeah, made her kind of into the stereotypical battered wife. Exactly. Yeah. That's pretty much, I hated it. I bad. I hated it right from the get-go. Even before I realized, oh, yeah, this series is bad. <laughs> but, um, then we have to get to, like, the main trio. Okay. So, who do you want to start with? I don't know. Let's start with the easy one. Let's yeah. start Let's start with Jet. Okay. Jet's fine. Mm-hmm. Except for the part about the family and the daughter. Yeah. That's the one thing I just can't get behind because it screws up so much of Jet's original backstory from the mm-hmm. anime. Yeah. Like, he was always a lone wolf in, in the original story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even the woman that he loved, who is also the mother of his child in this version, I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, so you so you basically threw away that entire storyline. Thanks yeah. a lot. Thanks a lot, Netflix. I appreciate it. Okay, so, calm down. Inner peace. Sorry, getting too far ahead of myself. I'm sorry. You like water, man. I know. Thank God I'm not drinking caffeine right now. Yeah, that would be scary. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't understand the reason why you need to have this daughter in there, is it? Because Jet was fine in the original. He was. Yeah. A, he yeah. got hot-headed at times, but he was still, like, the most chill out of all of them. Was able to think straight and was yeah. able to go straight to decisions. Yeah, and, you need to have sort of a, like sort of like a foundation like just that steady person he was the rock of the bebop mm-hmm. yep and just like the just the fact that like yeah it was it was it was his ship and it was his it was his ship it was his rules kind of thing mm-hmm. like and he yeah and 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 he had the principles like it was set by him. The reason why he left the space police like in the original was because he saw how corrupt it became. Mm-hmm. Part of it doing because of the fact that he was set up by his partner that he didn't even know at the time. Mm-hmm. He knew like the police were dirty, but he still decided to carry on until he just could not take it anymore. Yeah, he just could not let something go. And it was right? be- and it was because he involved himself so much in his work that he lost the girl that he loved. Mm-hmm. In this one. He's basically sent. A, he's basically um, sent away to jail because he was framed. Mm-hmm. That completely changes the character. Yeah. Just does not make any sense to me why that should have been in there. Like, it it, it is it is a trope. Mm-hmm. But I would much rather have like a person deal with like their own like um, self inflicted um, traumas that like. Yeah. Follow them through their life. It's then... stronger if he makes a choice to leave the police force as opposed to being framed and having to leave. There you go. Exactly. That's the part that irks me. Mm-hmm. A- any any extra thoughts to put on that for Jet? Ah, oh, no. That's it. Then let's get to Spike. Okay. So, this one's hard. This one's mm-hmm. really, really hard. Because I think John Cho... John Cho did good. Yeah. I overall, I, I, overall, I, I, I'm going to say something definite because I was like, I was going go to say, ahead. I was going to say, overall, I did not mind, but that's not definite at all. Right. I would say, overall, I liked it. Right. I liked the humor. I liked the, the ob- oblivious sort of. The yeah the 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 oblivious I just woke up act thing I love that um the, well he had the mannerisms down but it wasn't a caricature right um just... and the and it was sort of there was just enough of there was just enough of Spike in there and just enough of his interpretation that I. I, I that I I believed it was a, I believed it was really the character sometimes. Um he had his moments. Yep, he had his moments. I also have really been wanting noodles for a long time now, all week. 
It's because of the Teddy Bomber episode, isn't it? Yeah. That might be why I like the Teddy Bomber episode. <laughs> it's because, like... The noodle that, scene. That whole... No, because that whole episode... He wanted noodles. That whole episode, the reason... He, like, the way... He explains everything away by just saying, I'm gonna go get noodles. So did you get your noodles? No, I didn't get my noodles. Still they, hungry. Never got my noodles. They got a noodle bar I'm spike. just hungry and tired. That's all. Let's go get this guy. Can you get me those noodles? They're still warm. Still warm. Okay, we've solved the Is mystery it? of why I like the Teddy Bomber episode. Fair <laughs> because enough. Because I also am a hungry waif-like vagrant. Um, uh, I mean, are, aren't all millennials in the end? Actually, yes. Yeah. That really calls to my millennial heart. Yeah. Being a uh, being a freelancer, barely scraping it together. I sit here with a bag of pretzels at my side. Yep. Yep. Any... Literally, today, for dinner, I had. What did I have? Did I have anything? Well, Hannah contemplates for meal choices in life. Um, I had an instant chicken pot pie. That's ah. what I had. <laughs> um, That'll but do it. Yes. Overall, overall, he did well with what he was given. It was in the series. Yeah, it was fine. What it was given. Um, I think the only pr- thing that I just, it, I, whether it was unintentional or not. They portrayed Spike a lot older than what he should have been. Because he's only in his late 20s in the original Bebop. Mm -hmm. Like, he was young, so he still had all that energy, but you could tell, Mm -hmm. like, from his mannerisms and how he carried himself that he was world-weary from his time as as an assassin. Mm -hmm. So, it's a slight nitpick on that, but otherwise, um, he was fine. Yeah. See, I, I didn't. I don't. I didn't really know how old he was supposed to be in the anime. So I had. A, I had to double check myself. I. I was kind of like what. Like, my thought was basically like no older than early thirties, honestly. Yeah. So then all that's left is Faye Valentine, one of the most go into it popular yeah. characters mm-hmm. of and one of the most beloved like female characters of anime. Mm-hmm. What can can I get your thoughts on this before I go into mine? My thoughts, um, because I'm about ready to take the pin. Okay, wait a minute. It, it could I have taken my pin earlier? You could have. Yes. Okay. She took her pin. That whole thing in the church was like, you should see yourself. You look like a wild beast. That did not make any sense in the live action because no, it did not. No, because literally, like, as per usual. Like, Spike's pretty, pretty, like, he's, he's intense, but he's not, like, literally slavering with rage, you know? (laughs) Like, you see yourself, you look like a, you look like a wild beast. Like, what have you been doing this whole time, then? Exactly. (laughs) We don't see that kind of thing from, uh, Vicious. We don't even see that kind of viciousness from Spike in this version. No. Not even during the fight with LeFou. We get more of that, more of Spike's viciousness in the anime, from the anime fight with Mm -hmm. LeFou. Oh, you know what? The, the, okay, this, like, the scary spike was, uh, in the, uh, the, the Jupiter Jazz when some people thought that he was vicious. Uh-huh. He just, like, completely decked them all because they, cause he's like, you think I'm vicious? You don't know vicious. And he just, like, takes them out and stuff. And you're like, whoa, scary spike. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, we see that in the original, like, Jupiter Jazz, like uh-huh. you said. There's no evidence to the contrary in that regard in that church scene with that famous exchange of dialogue with them mm-hmm. basically holding the gun and the katana at each other's throats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That so, justifies that dialogue. Yeah, but in the... Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't justify it. So, yeah, I feel like if they had sort of... I feel like if we had made... um, I feel like if we had given if we sort of just 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 with vicious just just dialed everything down way down um to sort of like that you know just the the subtle you know he's he's like a he's 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 like a very very thin sharp blade basically mm-hmm. very um like precise and stuff and then well yeah like there's a reason he carries a katana because it's a very, it's a like it's like it's finesse. It's a yes. very like accurate 
agile weapon and incredibly deadly. Um, and we go from deadly, finesse, mm-hmm. and absolutely straightforward mm-hmm. to, to whatever the fuck that was. <laughs> to, to, the, to the Space Cowboy rendition of Draco Malfoy. Actually, that's a good way of putting it. I literally saw a YouTube comment basically portray that, and I'm like, that is a funny idea. I am taking that. Yep. And um, I think, yeah, that if we, yeah, if we could just have that from Vicious and then shown just like a, a couple of, a couple of moments with Spike where we see what, because we saw, we saw what, we saw what, what Julia does to him. Like we saw the change in him when mm-hmm. he saw her, but when he saw Vicious, we didn't see that. We didn't see that sort of, like, that's the only time I feel like that in the, in the anime that Spike got kind of unhinged. Yep. Was when it comes to Vicious. Yeah. And, um. Because, because he's basically Spike's shadow. Basically. Like. I think they, they, yeah. Like, same training, same upbringing, same everything, but mm -hmm. literally his darker half. Mm -hmm. Like, the one that is sociopathic to the point where he has no moral compass. Mm -hmm. He will cross whoever he has to in order to achieve power. Yep. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that's what, that's what I had to say. That was my pin about uh, the church, the church scene. No, no problem. Yep. Honestly, I'm glad one of us said it because honestly, I think it meant a lot more coming from you than from me, who's an old head. Wait, what did what did what what? The, it's ranting about the church scene. Oh, right. I'm glad yes, you yes. brought that up because I'm because I'm about to bring up the thing with Faye. Okay, go ahead. Did you want to say anything about Faye before I? Um, not really. Okay. I can't think of anything right now. I'm about I'm taking my pin now. Okay. Everybody says they don't like how over-the-top obnoxious that the, that this version of Faye is. I did not mind. Neither did I. Every, 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 everybody, there were some people that were... To, um, She's a woman with attitude. Yeah. They, 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 they just portrayed it in a different way in this version. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I'll take a different take on this. Some people were thinking, were talking about, why, why, why would they have like Faye like question like her sexuality and stuff like that? I'm like, you know what? That's an understandable point, mm-hmm. but I'm perfectly okay with them trying something new with this. I, I was, I was fine with that too. But there is one thing, major thing in particular, that I need to address that this adaptation does that fundamentally messes up her entire character and reason for being on the Bebop. Whoa. In, in this version, Earth-shattering it, stuff here. it is established that she is already an experienced bounty hunter. Right. Then why, do, then why does she still need the identity kit from her mother? Curiosity? Just having the truth? But in the original version, mm-hmm. the, reason, the reason why she... Be, she didn't start out as a bounty hunter. She was a mm-hmm. criminal that was running away from a massive debt. Right. And she was basically stealing and conniving her way into trying to figure out how to basically pay everything off that she basically had taken from her. Mm-hmm. That she was thrown into this world that she doesn't understand, understand and scam for everything that she had. If she's already a successful bounty hunter and seems to already be doing well for herself in this world... Mm-hmm. She seems like she's doing good for herself even though she has amnesia. Yep. If I had amnesia, I'd... That's not where I would be. So, excuse me if I find it a little bit difficult to understand that you have someone who proclaims she is doing well off for herself, even getting one of the most famous bounties in-universe in the live-action version, Mm -hmm. compared to a complex, emotionally unstable, but keeps cards close to the chest variant from the original who utilizes every single thing that she has going for her in terms of her looks, her wit, her mouth, every single thing that she has available to her to basically live another day. Mm-hmm. This, this live-action version is not Faye Valentine. 
This is I don't un, I don't understand why this needed to happen. It's it, it's a small thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it goes it's for me basically kills the character dead in the water in the live hmm. action version. That honestly didn't occur to me when I was watching it. I had to think about it long and long and hard. I was kind of like after everything. Yeah, I um I didn't really I didn't really see her as too successful when she showed up honestly in the live action. Like it didn't it seemed like she was like, you know, scraping by, but I didn't really get the impression that she had made a huge name for herself really as a bounty hunter. I think it was kind of like well, remember in episode oh. five when uh, Jet was off with his partner doing his stuff and her mm-hmm. and Spike uh, stayed on the Bebop and they were oh, arguing yeah. about everything? Yeah, I remember and they that. Were, and they were playing the one-up-upping game with each oh, other. Oh, yeah, I remember she was talking about the one with the, the fingerprints yep. stuff. That yeah. was basically the thing that like brought her all the success and like mm-hmm. uh, Spike was like, wait, you were the one that brought him in? Yeah, but he didn't even know who she was, that it was her who did that was the thing. I don't know. But like even still, like they're, they're, they still... In the world of Cowboy Bebop, like even in the li- in the animated version, Jet knows so many other bounty hunters. Like mm-hmm. it's obvious, there's obviously like a large um, group of interconnectivity webs with each other mm-hmm. in order to like spread information and basically camaraderie or rivalry. Mm-hmm. So, how could you have never heard of Faye Valentine b- before? Even if you are Spike Spiegel and you are just blissfully ignorant. <laughs> Because you, you do do that. Uh-huh. You do do that. Uh-huh. But at the same time, like, it just does not work with Faye's backstory and Faye's character. Hmm. The, the main reason why so many fans love Faye Valentine is because she's, obvi- she's obviously well capable of handling herself, even though she has all this debt up against her, even mm-hmm. though... Yeah, she does have a huge gambling problem. She's got the mouth of a sailor. She gets mm-hmm. herself into trouble more often than not. It's because like she has this drive to figure out who she who she is and trying to do everything. And because she has been hurt before and betrayed that she plays everything very close to the chest mm-hmm. and de- and develops what I believe to be possibly one of the best femme fatale kind of characters in anime. Mhm. You took this unique aspect of what was one of the pieces of what made Cowboy Bebop so special to so many people and basically broke her character in a way where she was almost unrecognizable apart from cosmetic appearance. And that is basically what it's like with a lot of the live-action Cowboy Bebop. So, that being said, in terms of, like, characters and everything like that, I think the live-action version is just, it does not work. Mm-hmm. But I'm willing to defend this. In terms of, like, visual style, like, how far they go to try to recreate, like, the world of Bebop mm-hmm. in live-action. They did pretty well with that. They did really well. Yeah. They even had the ceiling fan. Yeah, like, they recreated the Bebop almost, like, verbatim. Yep. I was amazed. I'm like, it doesn't seem like they're taking any of this for granted when you first watch it. Like, the, in, the, in the opening scene, it even looked like the casino that was from, like, Faye's That's introductory right. episode. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm willing to take the ride. And then when you show the fact that it was basically an updated version of Tank from uh, Yoko Kano and them, and it's almost like a live-action recreation of the original classic opening, I'm like, okay, okay, I'll give you a chance. I'll give you a chance. And they brought the same music people back yeah. to do the soundtrack. But I, th- I think another reason why I love the original Bebop soundtrack so much is that it wasn't always just like Bebop or jazz style music. Mm-hmm. Like, there was there... other stuff too. Mm-hmm. It's like Western. Something. Yep. I was actually listening to the entire soundtrack um, at my, at, at my, during my shift today yeah. when I was working at my cafe. And um, I forgot, like, how many different genres of music were in this. And mm-hmm. I remember during an interview with um, the the crew that worked on the original Beat Bop, including the director, Shinichiro Watanabe, mm-hmm. they 
specifically stated that they worked on the music of the series first. Hmm. And developed the story from there. That's cool. So, and you get a bunch of, like, well-distinct music from different stuff. You get blues music, which was in, like, the, um, uh, blues episode with the child, with the, the over 90-year-old, uh, man that had the appearance of a child. Right, yeah. You had, um, uh, the... Tr- Sympathy the s- for the Devil. That's, Sympathy for that's the devil. another of my favorites. Top five. Mm-hmm. Easy. Then you, then you had, um, uh, the space trucker VT who went by Heavy Metal Queen, and you had, like, all of, like, that different, like, hard rock and heavy metal instrumental all throughout that. Mm-hmm. You get, like, the orchestral, like, choruses and operatic melodies from Ballad of Fallen Angels. Mm-hmm. You get the classical musical um, aspects, such as, like, Beethoven during the Don't Leave Anything in the Fridge episode. <sighs> Toys in the Attic. Toys in the Attic. That one's amusing. I love it. And it's like... Don't leave things in the fridge. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And there's so many other great so much great songs that was not used in this adaptation but at the same time i'm like you don't have to really do that but you can you can be more experimental with the music Mm -hmm. yeah like think about other great cowboy bebop stories that they didn't adapt into this version Mm -hmm. what would heavy metal queen have looked like oh yeah i don't know that would have been interesting uh, it's it would be hard to do toys in the attic, but that, w- yeah. that would be something. That would be interesting. Sympathy for the devil. That would have been tricky to find a child I mean, to I, do that. I mean, there are some pretty creepy children out there. Good child actors exist. They do. If Stranger Things has taught us anything. Great child actors exist. They really do. Yeah, that one would have been interesting. Oh my gosh. Or like, <laughs> I'm just now. I'm just thinking about toys in the attic, and I'm like. How would you do that? Yeah. The thing, not even, the creature isn't even the hardest part. It's how would you light a cigarette with a blowtorch in real life? <laughs> that is true. That is very true. <laughs> Ooh. I love it. What about Bohemian Rhapsody with Chessmaster Hex? <gasps> that would have been creepy. What if that, what if that, what if that was one of the um, uh, stories that they would possibly would have saved for like a season two of Hex yeah. if it had been greenlit? Oh, man. I mean, you never would have known. Yeah. Like, like with a live action adaptation, like you can go in so many different directions with like mm-hmm. taking stuff, yeah, like in different directions. Or you could have just created like original content, hmm. but still remain faithful to like the characters of how they are, yeah, how they act. You don't really need to Americanize it to the utmost degree because they yeah. Americanize the absolute heck out of this to an extent, hmm. but. Something got lost in translation. Mm hmm. And it failed. Yeah. And I think it's just something that happens to like a lot of remakes of a lot of different things. Yeah, it's hard to make a remake, honestly. Like, it's when translating from like animation to live action. Mm hmm. There's very few live action yeah. remakes of anime that work. And I say that be, being a fan of the live action adaptations of Roroni Kenshin. Mm-hmm. They made five of those films and they all work. Uh-huh. So, I'm just, it's hard to do this one because Bebop is in the pantheon of anime. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like, anybody who has seen it usually will say, this is a timeless story. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty good. The original director, Shinichiro Watanabe, even stated in interviews that during the production of the show, he was, um rallying behind um uh, the crew and everything like that it's like we are going to create a show that will be looked upon 30 years later and be known as timeless mm-hmm. nobody believed him at the time and yet here we are we're yeah. we're two-thirds of the way there yeah. technically we're two-thirds of the way there and it still is oh, yeah yeah it's pretty great and the li- this live action remake i don't see getting that same level of treatment i don't i don't think so either um I say it was an interesting experiment. I mean, for as long as it was in production hell, the fact that we even got a um, finished product out of it at all. Yeah. I mean, it's something. 
Mm-hmm. You gave it a valiant attempt. Yep. You made it look like it, and honestly, that's better than what a lot of people have done for other anime adaptations. Yeah. Taking a look at you, live-action remake of Death Note from America. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was truly horrible. Oh my god. <laughs> Maybe we should just dedicate a month to, like, bad films. Bad films? Yeah, we're going to do that. We, we decided. Oh, yeah, that's right. We did we're going talk to do about that. that. Yeah. What were we going to call it? Because um, there's no... Name pending. Name pending. We will call it... I don't know. My, my, my brain farted. Yeah. It, we, we've been talking about this for a very long yeah, time. Yeah, I am uh, mentally tired. Ugh. Honest- think, although now I want to I want to go home and make some art like uh, and honestly from what you show me in the notebook like I mean this watching it kind of just inspire like some kind of spark in it I mean you, yeah, you basically no. drew, drew a lit cigarette and everything like that I yeah I yeah I don't know I, I don't know what I'm gonna be doing if I'm either gonna be writing or like doing some doing some art for giveaways and loaded dice because i want to be doing that more yeah um i'm probably going to be rewatching watching Mob again yep the the anime yep oh yeah like i like Love we said it. it's timeless mm-hmm. i and honestly i feel like i need it after yeah a lot of stuff that happened with this yeah. one because honestly the bebop it could have it could have done better if the mm-hmm. finale did not utterly betray not not early betrayed, just miss the point of yeah. what Bebop stands for. Yeah, I'm... Hmm. It's not the worst adaptation of an anime by far. Yeah, but it was it was still... It was strange. <laughs> it, it was a journey of something, all right. Yeah, it was a journey. Um, although, yeah, I... Um, yeah, that's one of the reasons... Like, like okay, I didn't not enjoy it while I was watching. Like, I never got, like, actually angry about anything. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. But I wasn't, like, blown away. I would say that amused is the word that I would use. I agree. And, um... But, yeah, but it's... It, it doesn't compare to the anime by a long run. And, um, I think one of the reasons that, like... It's one of those it's one of those shows that like I watch it and I just feel more cheerful after I've watched it. You know? <laughs> just like, oh yeah. You know? Feeling good. You know, I don't I don't I don't know why. It just <laughs> it just makes me happy. Yep. Um so yep. Did not ruin the anime for me. I'll still be watching that. It's it's hard to ruin an what many consider a classic masterpiece, and true, I'm true. of that same opinion. How long have we been talking about this? We, we've been going for nearly an hour thirty minutes. This, oh. might, this is probably one of our longest. Ep- this is probably our one of our longest episodes since the uh, one about the, uh, the the prison trials. Oh, um, the Stanford, uh, Stanford prison, ex- prison experiment. Yeah, the prison the prison experiment. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't our other one about bebop kind of long too? It was a long one, but I don't think it reached this long. Oh. But this was like a build upon from like the Bebop episode that we did for yeah. in April last year. Yeah, we Wh- should um we should we should share the um Patreon episode that we released a while back as well. We 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 will. I'll 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 make sure we make it available. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, like I'm just gonna again piggyback off you said like there there was some stuff that this adaptation did okay, but mm-hmm. it did not stick the landing yeah the the original bebop will obviously like stay in the hearts and minds of like anime fans for generations to come yep like but at the same time i didn't find myself outraged during the watching of this like i apologize Mm -hmm. if i came off as too stern or too critical during stuff in this but these were thoughts that I originally had after I sat down mm-hmm. after watching the entire series and tried to yeah. hit different plot points because I really was thinking about it. I mm-hmm. actually did make notes on this. Yep, that's a big deal. He never makes notes. That that's true. That is true. <laughs> Hannah's the note taker, not me. Yep. I, I literally had to sit down and like literally think about this for this one. And these were things that I noticed, and I just 
I was more disappointed than I was outraged. Mm -hmm. Main reason why it came off in this one is because I'm a little bit low on sleep right now and I need to be a little bit more hyperactive in order to help create a little more content. And I hope I did not scare you lovely listeners. You scared me a little bit, but not not, not too much. I'm sorry, Hannah. I didn't mean to scare you. No, I don't know. I'm very, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very sensitive to noise and, and tones of it's okay. people's voices. It's okay. Stuff. It's okay. Aww. It's okay. I'm good. But, but overall, it tried. I can't say that it didn't really give too, um, uh, too much, but, you know, it tried, failed. The original Bebop still stands tall. If you guys have a curiosity of watching this and just... Seeing where we stand on this and trying to understand, yep. go take a look at the, at the remake of Bebop for yourselves. It's currently still streaming on Netflix, as is the original um, uh, series itself. Mm-hmm. Do a side by side comparison. Draw your own conclusions. Yep. Some people like. Yep. Some people really like the reboot that have seen the original. Some people yep. don't like the reboot and they haven't seen the original. There's several different opinions on this, and mm-hmm. honestly, from what I've heard from people or what i heard from people before i watched it um it was not as bad as i thought it was going to be N- me neither. I, <laughs> I, I was like i was i was like i was literally expecting to literally not be able to watch the whole thing like i was expecting to be like this is crap turn it off but i did watch the whole thing yeah same i thought so, i thought it was going to be something like heinous like one of those like really bad like early 2000 parody films right but there was actually some form of quality to this. Yep. And you know what? I'm glad I watched it and we made we were able to make these comparisons and just like mm-hmm. hash out why this did not work. Yep. And this is what we do. It's it's what we do. Yep. It's it's a critical analysis. And yep. and unfortunately this I'm not very good at the critical part, but I try. I try to be opinionated. You're 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 more on the analysis side. I was a little bit more on the critical side on this one to my to my critical opinions. analysis. Yeah. <laughs> but overall, that was our talk. That was our review of Bebop 2021 live action. Overall, I'd give it a C. I give it a C minus. C C minus. Yeah, yeah, I would too. There's there's some stuff to be taken out of it. It's not the absolute, like, worst anime adaptation, like, I've ever seen. Yeah, Death Note was pretty bad. <sighs> you haven't seen Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> that one's the absolute worst. <gasps> oh my goodness. That is the absolute worst. Oh my goodness. <sighs> but overall, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say on that. I think we can close off with that. I think so. Shall I, shall I play us out while you, uh, while you do the credits? <laughs> If you, if you so wish. Okay, I'll give you a um, I'll give you a little bit of a soulful background. For okay. Your uh, your 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 your, uh, your ending here. All right, here we go. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the General Geekery Podcast. If you guys want to support the show and uh, support doing what we do, you can donate to our Patreon or donate to our Coffee page. Links of which are in the description of this episode. If you want to follow uh, episodes when we go live, we are on all different sorts of um, platforms. We are on Spotify, Spreaker, as well as my personal YouTube channel, Anime Rev Productions. The links of all of that will be in the description of this episode as well. If you guys want to follow us on social media, you can find us on Twitter and Facebook at Gen Geek Podcast, and on Instagram at General Geekery. If you want to check out Hannah, you can check her out on Instagram at Pythian Legume. If you guys want to find me on social media, I am on Instagram and Twitter at RyuzakiNK7. You guys can also check us out on uh, Twitch at my personal Twitch page, RyuzakiNK7, where I do my own personal streams and where we do our Anepticon series where Hannah plays games. And you can check us out on Loaded Dice Adventures, where Hannah plays as part of the main series for um, uh, uh, for the Avenaria... Um, uh, series and we both play for Avenaria Corsairs playing some D&D and having a lot of fun doing it well that has been episode 102 of the General Geekery podcast for Hannah Kubiak playing the kazoo right now I'm Donald Kaczynski and until next time guys always remember to keep your geek on clink clink 
See you, Space Cowboy. Thank you.